Okay. Welcome everybody out to the regular scheduled commission county, Uinta County Commission meeting. It's October 17th at 11 a.m. We're located in the commission chambers. Um, before we get started, I'd ask everybody to shut your phones off or at least put them on silent. And we'll start this uh, our agenda with, with a prayer by Sherry Bolton and the Pledge of Allegiance by Mike Wilkins. Thank you, Sherry. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. Next item on the agenda is approval of minutes for the September 26, 2022 meeting. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes for the September 26, 2022 meeting. Okay, we have a motion. Second. A motion, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Thank you, Sherry. Thanks, Mike. Next Appreciate item that. Is a report of the warrants and the review of counter signatures and certified list of claims. Commissioners, we have three weeks worth today. First one is September 30th in the amount of $454,619.66. There's a few on there I wanted to point out. Equipment purchase in the road department, a street sweeper for $18,500. There is also a payment for the new trucks that finally showed up to Williamson and Goodwin Truck Company for $163,718. Check run October 7th in the amount of $417,197.02. There was a payment to Caterpillar Finance for the greater leases for $86,000. There was also a payment to Guy's Engineering Inc. for the rope tow at the Snow Hill for $41,700. And then the next check run, October 13th, in the amount of $294,897.25. There was a Caterpillar, Caterpillar Finance on that and $40,758. I believe that was the track hole. And then uh, there was a Vernal City check to Vernal City for $69,886, which 68000 of it was a transfer of federal funds back for the FAA back to Vernal City on that. And, as far as claims, <clears throat> we have a few days today. First one was to ESRI, check number 382308 for $20,940. They didn't get a purchase order on that one. It is an annual agreement with them, but we didn't. they didn't get a purchase order on that one. Next one, check number 382444, market on main. These were either part of the... Phenomicon or the Travel and Tourism Conference. I'm not sure exactly what it was. $1,902.60. Mountain Land Supply Children's Just Center. It was an emergency AC unit repair. Uh, $588, but they weren't able to get a PO at the time, so we just were throwing, passing that through as a claim. 
Check number 382461 to 711 Ranch Restaurant for $6,896.50. Again, this was the travel and tourism on that one. And the next one to Sweet Branch Freeze Dried. Check number 382243 for $2,000. And again, there's no PO issued on that one. Uh, next one to Vernal Brewing Company. Check number 382482. There was a purchase order issued on this one, but it was nowhere near close what it was. And there's two, two separate invoices on this, and one for $4,400 and one for $12,689. So that's the claims that we have today. Okay. Entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to authorize the counter signature on the certified list of claims as presented by Mike. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Cemetery certificates. Just two or three today, Commissioners. First one, Rock Point Cemetery, David J. Wagner and Rebecca R. Wagner. This is in phase two of the Rock Point. Block 335, lot C, spaces 33, 36, and 37. Moving to the Tridale Cemetery, Paul Squire, block 13, lot 10, space 2. And moving now to the Vernal Memorial Park, Sheila Ann Slaw. Block H, 137.5, lot 1, space 2. And that's all of them. Okay. Entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion to approve the counter cemetery certificates <laughs> as, as presented by Mike Wilkins. Okay. I have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, motion Mike. passed. Thank you. Tax matters today. No, no. Okay, no tax matters. Business licenses. Good morning, Gabby Hawks Blackburn with Community Development. We have four today. They're all um, Division One home based. I don't know if you guys. If that Same. Um, any different? Division One. Let's see, there's, there's two that have different, well, let's just hear them all separate. Okay. That'll They're be all easy. unique. Sorry about that. Okay, the first one is Uena Basin Auto Glass. So this is a home-based business where he repairs windshields. So um, we went by to check it out. Everything looks great. He will be storing some of the supplies that he uses to fix the windshields at his house. Uh, it's located at 3727 North, 4500 East, Parcel number 133115 in the A4 zone. Um, everything checks out. We recommend approval of this business license with the condition that no work is done at the home, all work will be done at the client's home, and that they follow all Uinta County home-based business rules and regulations for storage. Okay, any questions no. on that? I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the business license for Uinta Basin Auto Glass with provision they abide by all of the business regulations and only do the work at the client's home or second. location, I should say. Second. Yeah. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. The next one is Tri-West Services, located at uh, 19753 East, 7000 South, parcel number 814.4 in the A4 zone. Uh, they do hydro extraction. So they also find your utilities. They'll clean out tanks, clean out cellars, suck up trash. They have an 800 vac trailer and like a pickup truck that pulls it. Neither one of those require a CUP to be parked at the home. We went out there, everything checks out. We recommend approval of this application with the uh, condition that no commercial vehicles or trailers are parked at the home without first obtaining an approved CUP. Right now he doesn't have any, it's just if in the future he expands. And that waste of waste is disposed of in a manner approved by Tri-County Health Department, no waste or trash is compiled at the home and that he follow all Uinta County home-based business rules and regulations. 
Okay. Any questions or discussion on this one? Entertain a motion. I'd make a motion to approve the Tri West Services. Yep. And hydro extraction, I don't know if that's part of the name or not, but with all the stipulations and the requirements of the home-based business that has been presented. Okay, have a motion. Second. Have a motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion passed. The next okay. one is Bam Bam's Food Shack. Um, this will be parked at various locations, but um, where it'll be stored at 2241 West, 3000 North, parcel number 419-146 in the A1 zone. Uh, Fire approved this, Tri-County Health approved this. We went out and checked it out. They're good to park it where they have it now. It's not large enough to require a conditional use permit at this time. So we recommend approval of this application with the condition that they follow all fire and Tri-County Health Department rules and regulations and follow all Uinta County home-based business rules and regulations. Okay. Any discussion on this one? You said where they have it parked now. Where is it parked now? At their home, and they're going to use the home as a home office. Okay. Okay. What was it? It was Bam Bam's... Food Shack. Food They'll be shack. selling sandwiches okay. and things. Mr. Chairman, I'd make the motion to approve um, the business license for Bam Bam's Food Shack um, with the expectation they follow county business rules or business license rules, fire and health district um, rules and regulations. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Great. And then the last one is HP Painting and Repair. This is also a home-based business located at 231 West, 2500 South, parcel number 623-251 in the RA1 zone. So they do um, painting, flooring, and small home repairs. There's no contractor's license. So we recommend approval of this application with the condition that they follow all handyman rules and requirements, including scope of work and no projects over $1,000, and that they follow all Uinta County rules and regulations for the home-based business. Okay. Any further questions, comments? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion that we go ahead and approve the HP painting and repairs with all the county regulations and stipulations that have been presented on their home-based business license. Okay. Have a motion. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Let's see, the next one is a bid opening and possible bid awarding for the fencing located at the Western Park. Do we have anybody from the Western mm -hmm. Park here? Yes, Mel's back there and oh, Tracy's there back there. Commissioners, we received two bids. One I know is on the ice, Western Park ice rink and amphitheater. This other one just says Western. So I'm not sure if this is on the fence. I'm just guessing that it's on the fence. So. I'd like to open that in first because I'm thinking, I don't know who it's from, Hurricane Utah. So this could be for the so second one. It could be. Okay. So when we open, we'll know what that's for. It is the fencing. Now I can see the rest of it. Okay. So this bid is from Western Fence Company out of Hurricane, Utah. like there's two options option one chain link fence uh, $37,879 option two is a galvanized one is a nine gauge galvanized chain link fence that's $37,879 the 10 gauge galvanized chain link fence is $46,879 so with that commissioners I don't know if this is time sensitive is this time sensitive 
can we make sure they meet all the specs? So, what was the it. gauge on that first one? The low end, eight first or one is nine. Okay, the chain link fence option one, 1500 feet of 72 inch, nine gauged galvanized. Nine and the other one is the same amount of fence, but it's 10 gauged galvanized okay. for 46,879. And this fence is at the Western Park, where? South. If you don't. Oh, <clears throat> south side along the, between the houses and. Melanie Silcox, Western Park. It's on the south side um, that borders the racetrack and the, the homes that are there. Oh. It's that fence that's been there nearest we can tell has been there at least 30 years and it's wooden slats they've all broke they're falling out the fence is coming down there's no more and this privacy. is in the budget for this year yes okay is this the is this just the fence it was it six foot fence um, 72 inch six foot six foot fence are there slats going plastic slats to go in it too or is it just yes the fence? i believe that the two bids that is there. Yes, uh, one is brown slats. PDS slats. Okay, so it does include the slats yeah. in this price. One is slats that just go in, and I believe that the 10 gauge is a complete privacy, so they're, the slats that are in do not have like a little gap, gap in between, between it. It's, oh. it's the first one has solid. a 75% visibility blockage. The other one has a 95% visit, visibility okay. blockage. So there is okay, a difference so there, besides just yeah. the gauge. Yeah. They're both okay. saying they're tear out the old, install the new wire, dispose of old fence. So that's kind of the difference in your, okay. in the gauges there. Okay. Is it time sensitive? Do we? No, we can make sure it meets all the specs. And then do bring it next week? Yeah, well, that's fine. Right. Are there two bids on this one or just the one bid? Just the one bit, because the other one does say Western Park Ice Rink and Amphitheater. Well, that's the second word okay. right. based upon. Well, we could, that's yes. We then we don't have to bring it back. It's up to you. I will put it up for a motion. You do it. Make a motion however you guys want. You could award okay. it based on if yeah. it meets all the specs. So I will, I will go ahead and do that. Um, absent any advice from the attorney, um, to the contrary, I would say we'd go ahead and I would make the motion, Mr. Chairman, to accept the bid and award the bid um, to Western Fence Company. Company of Hurricane Utah, provided that the that their proposal meets the minimum requirements um, set by the request for bid. Commissioner, would you be amenable to adding well, that too, but adding as long as it falls under the budgeted amount? I know we budgeted yes. for it. I but, haven't got a clue. But double what check and make one. sure it matches the budgeted amount. Yes, amend the motion to include the being within the budgeted amount as well. Okay. Have a motion. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this one? John, Brad. And, uh, no, we are just, you know, it's kind of, I, th I know we have fence builders around here. It's kind of puzzling why the, we only got one bid, but I don't know if there's, you know, you know what I'm saying? They, I don't know if they probably just don't, either they're so busy, they don't interested, or they don't pay attention to the process. paper notices. That how it goes out in this paper, mm -hmm. you know, but it, uh, and I, uh, I, I have part of the answer to that. I did talk to one that came and gave me the distance. Um, it was RC Fencing. I did talk to them, and he said he didn't know if he would even put a bid in. He was so busy. He didn't know if it was something he could even get to in this year, and it would be out a ways to next year, yeah. if so. Yeah, but I left that up to him as far as if he put it, one it, in or not. But Any idea? If, is that a... A type of fence. I don't know. Is that a good price? So, fair price? Um, we went by you to know, check I, it out. Everything looks I, great. He will be storing you know, some of the supplies yeah, that he uses to fix the windshields at his house. Yeah. 
Uh, it's located oh, at 3727 North, 4500 East, parcel number 13315 in the so A4 zone. And look at um, everything so checks out. We recommend approval of this business license with do. the condition that no he work is done at the home, all work will be done at the I client's home, and that they follow all UNA County home-based business rules and regulations for storage. I don't know if it was nine gauge, but it was not the solid privacy on So you're comfortable with the price in something that's not just on that? I know that it is close to what this one has been. Chairman, I move to approve like the business do. license for Unibase Basin and Auto Glass. We're not knowing the first thing about it, and uh, you know what that type of fence costs. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Yeah, it's not long enough. I don't know. I know that slats years ago were ten dollars a foot. Do we have Mike? Do we just put it in the paper, or do we advertise online as well? Do you we put it on our website. It's there. It's also online, and then also. When we have specialty items, we also try to solicit bids from it is known defensive. vendors. Now I can see because the rest of it. Okay. we know nobody in Vernal does so that. This bid it's is from Western is. Fence Company. I don't know if anyone else has out of Hurricane Utah on this project. You have to come up to the no. mic. <laughs> State your name. Okay. Looks like there's no, two options. Option to. one, chain link <laughs> fence, uh, $37,879. Okay. Option no two is a galvanized. And a second, all in favor. One is a nine gauge I'm, galvanized I'm, chain link fence. Fast. Okay, the next one, the bid opening possibility awarding for the Western Park Ice Rink and Amphitheater. Commissioner, we received one bid on that one from BHI Inc. here in Vernal for that project. Let's see if I can find a price on it. Sure enough. <coughs> no, this is the Memorial Hospital of Sweetwater County. <laughs> See if we listen to the cheap seats in the back. Best Western Old Duchesne County Library. That's their projects. Not to chastise you, Jay, but you need to come up and talk in the <laughs> mic if you're going to talk. Uh, their fee proposal for this is 10000 Nope. We'll take it. <laughs> I'm say, we'll take that one. That's the pre-construction fee. Oh. Pre-construction fee, 10838 Ten, Then the construction management fee is 10% of total bid. Cost of bonds, 1% of total bid. Construction supervision, $22,837 per month. Uh, contractor change orders, 10% to the subcontractor suppliers. Uh, Self-performed work will be no more than 12 percent. So I'm not seeing a. Their bid is it's based on a percentage. Be, it's not going to be a hard bid, except the one section for 20. And the right, pre the pre-construction and then and the $22,000 a month construction supervision fee. We'll have some discussion on this. You have any discussion that? Well, uh, this is one I th I think would be well to have some folks look at it uh, and then bring back a recommendation. I'm, I don't know that we need a motion for that. I just that would be my. You asked. That's what I think. I, think I agree. So I agree. So we'll take, into consideration take this under consideration and see where we come out. Bring it back. Okay. Who's on that group? Who would you have on that group to look at it? I haven't got a clue who you've got on this one. There's John, Commissioner Horrocks, 
Yeah, we've had facilities, Western Park, with the Great. all of Western Park, okay. and then uh, Commissioner Horrocks. Okay. Right. I've been to a few meetings where Commissioner Horrocks yeah, hasn't been able to be there. You guys have kind of tag team, depending on the meetings. And with this, we'll probably bring in our, we may need to bring in our engineers too, that we have UELS, since they were the ones who put together the concept design. So it might be good just to run it by them uh, once we've had a chance to review. Does this one have any time sensitivities to it as well? Does it need to be? It does. Uh, it's not, not, week, not, for, right? not for a week, no. Okay. Okay. We'll take this one under advisement, advisement look at it. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the kitchen equipment transfer from the Uinta County Conference Center to the Western Park Public Safety, Uinta Care Center, and Golden Age Center. Good morning, Tracy Smeo and Uinta Conference Center. Um, I'm here requesting approval to be able to transfer equipment that we have presently that is new that has not been used at the conference center. A little bit of history, when the conference center was built, it was intended to have a full-time catering staff, kitchen staff there, so equipment was ordered um, as such. Um, and some of the, all of what we're being transferred has not been used and I've found other departments within the county that can use it and wants it within their kitchen and that's what I'm requesting is that you approve the um, transfer from you and a conference center to public safety to you and a care center the Golden Age Center in Western Park this this is there any oh, sorry go ahead uh, unless you've got the loan paid off on that so we're not going to run into any loan stipulations, CIB loans. No, it's, loans not, or paid it's no, not, not paid off. It's not paid off. It's not paid off. No, it's not, is it? That's right. But are we going to run into any problems there with the loans that we still have out? I wouldn't think we would. That's on, why I'm here requesting approval to yeah. find out if there is a problem with it. You know, they, uh, John, you think, you know, if they're, I don't know that. My word, technically, it's never been used. And at 10 years old, it's probably considered zero value, y you know, but it, there is value. But I. And all that, all of that was installed as part of the construction. So we didn't purchase any of not after the conference center opened none of this equipment has been purchased. It was a part of the original part purchase. Of the original mm -hmm. construction yes. costs and installation. So is it is it part of the security for the loan in the first place then? You know, I think it just being equipment now was it yeah. is it built in equipment? The, is it the reefers is usually what just is like it? some of those uh, appliances and stuff like that, fixtures hmm. and stuff would be tied to the I guess if we really needed to zero in on it, we'd have to look at the the loan documents and see what they're saying stays with the land runs with the land or if it's just viewed as appliances Structure. and stuff like that i mean the, we couldn't rip out all the lighting and sell that right that's right that's no this to the, is all um there's auto shams a range soup kittle braising pan uh banquet cabinet and some storage bins mm. so it's all mobile and not Without being pulling the documents, I'm sure that the lien is on the building itself. Just the building. And yeah, it, it typically is. Yes, I'm just wondering what there. what they're tying to the building, right? If you think of like a home purchase, yeah. they usually split out and they say what run, what's staying with the home, and if it's a refrigerator, no, that's owner owned, and they can take it, right? So it kind of depends on how it's defined. I, I agree. Typically, it wouldn't be viewed as part of the building. It was just there was a loan amount that you essentially were financing to put appliances in the building. Because it did cost us substantially more than what the loan is. There was a lot of general fund monies put, money into put in there. So and capital projects. I don't, I don't think we'd have any problem with that equipment. But so that could have been tied to then what furnishing the, the, the building rather than building the, right. the building. Dude. What about inventory wise? Is that something that you. We would have it on inventory. <laughs> It's Odds not on you and a conference center. Just one big total sum. Um, sum. Yeah, it's not on you and a conference like center. The idea inventory would be it. impact mitigation. That was my other mm -hmm. thought. Is yes. yeah. a lot of that FF&E was purchased by the impact mitigation mm -hmm. district. Tremendous idea. 
to get this um, transferred, and I think it's great. And just questions, did, it was all up. okay. Did we already sell the trash compactor, or did we mm. dispose yes, we of did. that? Yes, we did, and got a lot more for it than what we thought, but it still wasn't close to what we paid for it. Is it? The and it was sold through state surplus. The kitchen will still be a workable kitchen without this equipment. Mm -hmm. Be able yes. to do what we need to do. We haven't been using this equipment. No, this equipment was moved upstairs. Mm. Rhett is here. Rhett could probably tell you a whole lot more. Um, we used Rhett's expertise um, with knowing kitchens, catering, um, in-house catering, and a lot of this the caterers have not needed to use. Um, I also had Cam Pope come over, look at it to give his opinion, to say, okay, are, is there something we're missing? Should we be putting it in the kitchen? Is something that your catering company can use? And he agreed with what we had removed and what has not been used. So we've sought other opinions too. Do you have an estimated value? Don't forget about depreciation. Is there an estimated value for, because, I, as as Mike mentioned, it's it may be under on our books as kitchen equipment, mm -hmm. but individually, I don't know if they've got retail value. Is it something we want to maintain accountability for? Um, so it needs to have a property number be transferred so that we know it, because we don't want stuff like that right. falling out of the system. I can do that a step part two and then bring it back. I can come up I, with, look and see well, what impact I, mitigation has. Well, I and think we can make a motion to get this to move forward, I think, yeah. with the proceedings and making sure you just kind of cover mm -hmm. our bases. Right, impact, I know that the public safety has had some equipment go down and they're really anxious to be able to get it so they don't have to purchase. So what would you like me to do? Well, just, just I don't even, when, I don't know, M Mike, whether when we keep inventory, do we have prices or costs on it, or do we just have a number, a serial number or a description of property, or if it's below a certain level, we don't care? I have listed all the serial numbers, Okay. That what we have here. Most of the FF&E was bought by the Impact Mitigation District, so I don't know what even... all they had kept of it, or they just showed it as a contribution to it. I don't either. Well, I, I think it, I it wasn't to, listed as assets during, when I talked to them for dissolution of impact. All, all they had was just their office equipment that they disclosed during those discussions. So yeah. I don't know how much to well, weigh that, but it just I'm just adding that to the conversation. It was still bought with public money. I just hate to see it go. It's well, we don't have that anymore. Right. That's why this I think she's doing the right way so that. And when we do dollar. decide to give it where it goes, we'll have a record. Put some sort of a value on it because we'll need to make that transaction. Okay. I'm good with that. Capital. And one, good one question I do have, Mr. Chair, if I can, while Mike's here. So it's anticipated that some of it would go to public safety complex, which obviously is the county's. Yes. Um, but the care center and the Golden Age Center. Uh, the health special service district has ownership. management responsibilities, right, and ownership of those buildings. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be a transfer within the county. Okay. It would be viewed as almost a like as a, as a contribution or a donation to a separate entity, which is fine, but I just wanted to make sure that that was clear Get that worked out. to say mm -hmm. if, if we're going to be giving it to a separate legal entity, which the health special service district is, we would need to account for it differently because it would come off of our inventory at that point. It'd be part of the health special service district's inventory. Right. They'll need to pick it up, but we have never, in, we've never inventoried that Sorry, no. because okay. we didn't buy it. Yeah. Okay. It's just going to set up upstairs and rot, work, don't you? What? It's going to set upstairs <laughs> and rot. We might as well get some use out of it okay. and then we don't have to buy new for right now. Okay. What would you like me to do to bring back to you? I, I think we, I think if we just put some kind of value. Yeah. Keep track of it, value and where it went. So we know rough where value. it went. Try to get a rough value, and I think that we can come back and just so we have a record. Okay. Well, I, I would look at approving it now with those yeah. things done. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, enter we okay. I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to 
approve the kitchen equipment transfer from the UNA Conference Center to Western Park Public Safety, UNA Care Center, and Golden Age Center with uh, following correct procedures and accountability as we've discussed. Okay. Have a motion. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Tracy, thank you for, for your work on that. That's good. Uh, that's that's good uh, work and good heads up on that. To let these other entities get some use out of it. Thank you. Everybody involved with it. Okay. Let's see where are we at. Consider approval of the contract for a pavement and concrete project for ADA improvements at the terminal entrance parking lot. Oh, Ken. Mr. Ken. Campbell. Thank you, Ken. Good morning to the commission and to the public. I'm Ken Campbell. I'm the director of the airport uh, today. As mentioned, uh, I've come before you to ask about uh, a pavement and concrete project for ADA purposes and improvements to the front of the terminal entrance uh, at the airport. Uh, I handed you each a document uh, that has a picture first that uh, is what used to be a grass island out in front of the terminal to the north of the terminal. It has three X's on it. Those represent uh, the two electrical poles and a flag pole that will be removed. If you quickly turn to page three of the actual document, uh, you'll see the actual proposal. First, uh, first statement says parking lot, $73,694.12. That's not the entire parking lot. That's just the portion of the island that we would remove. Uh, my staff and I will remove that island ourselves and save some money there. The next piece is a four-foot concrete waterway for $44,562.96 that will be positioned to the north portion of that island in an effort to better shed water to the east uh, and cause less icing in the winter. If you turn the page, the entire contract will cost us $118,257.08. This has been uh, appropriately bidded through the uh, Vernal City process and approved through the City Council. I'm here for your approval also. Is the airport not, is the entrance marginally ADA or is it non-ADA? If I was to answer that officially, I wouldn't know the answer, to be real honest. Okay. Uh, the, unofficially, the ADA parking spots are on the north of the island and the ADA entrance to the airport is on the south of the island. Okay. So we're going to remove that island. So, just a question. Are you asking for approval from the county to do the project? Uh, ultimately, in, the, in our inner service agreement, uh, it's kind of managed by the city. We've approved it appropriately. I'm just bringing it here to say, hey, do you have any other further imp information that might slow us down or anything like that? Okay. So, is this contractor has already been selected? Yes, sir. From, they went through the bid process and all yes, that? Yes, there was though. two contractors, and this one was the selected contractor. CKC is the uh, contractor. CKC Operations LLC. Okay. I don't have any questions. Do you have any questions? No. Discussion? Entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to, um, for Uinta County to approve the, um, the contract for the improvement at the airport for the ADA, um, the accessibility, as presented in this uh, proposal. And, and I think there's an authorization of signature for that as well, or is it just a... I don't think there is, actually. Okay. But I'll check and make sure. So it's just a concurrence approval. Okay. I have a motion. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? I'd like discussion. Okay. We got the money to pay for it. <laughs> yes, sir, we do. And uh, that, uh, again, probably should be noted. And forgive me for waiting until after the motion, so adjust as necessary. But that money will come from funds that uh, is provided by the city and the county, not 
uh, from federal funding. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also failed to mention that the removal of this island will provide us a third lane, so it will be mm, far better for us to get in and out of the airport. Okay. I don't know if that needs an adjustment, okay. but forgive me for that. With that discussion, is the motion still? Yes. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, Ken. Appreciate everything you do over there. Let's see. Next is an update on the 2022 sales tax revenue projection and the 2022 cash flow projections. Mark Caldwell, Uintah County Budget Officer. Commissioners and public, uh, have a couple items to update you on today. Uh, one is the sales tax projection for Uintah County for the 2022 budget year, and the other is a cash flow projection for the general fund for the 2022 um, year. I'm not sure what's wrong with that one monitor. Oh, is this one on? Okay, so. Oh, it's not on. Just this one turned off. Yes, it's on. Okay. So the county received six different sales tax, uh, sales taxes. Um, so the first one that I'll go over is the uh, ZAP tax, and, and that uh, helps to fund Western Park. So from this spreadsheet, you can see in 20, uh, 2021, we received $877,000 in that tax. This year, we've uh, projected... Well, we budgeted at 835,000. Um, to date, through September, we've received 857,000. So we're running a surplus over the budgeted amount of $217,000. The next one is the um, optional quarter cent that the county, uh, sales tax that the county has. So we've budgeted $3 million. Uh, through September, we've collected 2.1. Now, if you just were short, we've collected less than I budgeted by $33,000 through September. The next one is the county sales tax. So we budgeted $4.9 million. We've collected three point seven. million. Through September, we're $89,000 more than what we budgeted. So we have a surplus there. The restaurant tax... Uh, we've budgeted 575000 We've collected 465000 We have a $36,000 surplus. The transit room tax, we've budgeted 683000 collected 659000 We've got a $227,000 surplus through this, through uh, nine months. And then we have the transit sales tax. Uh, budgeted a million, we've collected 958, we've got a $232,000 surplus. So to sum this up, in total we're $770,000 surplus. The first one, the arts tax, the ZAP tax goes to Western Park. The next two go to the general fund and municipal services. So if you look at those two in total, we're still 60000 to the good. And the rest of them are all surpluses also. So that gives you an update of where we're, where we're at as far as what we budgeted. I did have a question, Mark. Okay. Because you're missing four months and some of those, are those, those are Three months. estimated if we get what we're supposed to for the next four months, or is there um, any chance that it's during those four months that are missing? I guess they're so trying to figure out what. When you say we're at a surplus, we're at a surplus for this point in the year, but there are four data points missing. Yeah, there's three more, three more months, uh, October, November, December, based okay. on my projections. Um, and, yeah, if the, if the money didn't come in on those, we could still go to a deficit. But if it keeps coming in like the project, it's the same projection methodology was used for the next three months that haven't come in as were used for the nine previous months. So. Okay. If the methodology holds, then we should be fine. One question, or maybe Mike will know this. We have to vote on that arts and 
to zap, zap, tax. zap tax. They every five years, Mike. Is that what ten years? There was talk about this next go around. Have you heard anything about taking that necessary vote off of there? Have I know heard? it's been talked about in the legislature. I don't know what the status is. We should talk to our legislator. I'm sure every county would get behind that. Yeah. There's very few counties that do not collect that zap tax and have gone through multiple elections on it. We've gone through it three times now, I want to say. Three times, and it's coming up in the next five Two years. years four, oh, yeah. ten years. I, it's, I, I was thinking because we've had it next sense. year, I was thinking, but maybe I'm no, wrong. No, no, no. no. That's not next year. Uh, it's a few okay. years. You can All see right. it in the... We ought to keep that on the radar with talking about. We need to be get hold of Winterton and those and keeping that. Take that, take the public vote out of it. And let it be a legislative yeah. point at this point. Okay. Would I that be well? Yeah. The votes to date have been with the understanding that it would come around again. Wouldn't there need to be one more vote if it were to be made permanent? Be that if it wasn't there, then the county would have to go through a tax increase to replace this revenue from somewhere else. But. Uh, your question, I think, Bill, we do have to vote on it one more time, but yes, I think, but in the meantime, they could maybe, could they get the legislation passed before we had to vote on it? Yes. Yeah. Could they? That, they it's could five do. years, they easy could. Yeah, we ought to, yeah. we ought to get that stirred I've up. I've mentioned that for several years and hasn't gone anywhere yet. Getting close now, we might can get some. You have a lobbyist now, Mike, you ought to reach out to him and push on him, huh? Any other questions on sales tax? No. Okay, I'll move on to uh, the cash flow projection. So I, I put copies of this cash flow projection on the back table if the public wants a copy of it. So there were some concerns raised when we um, started talking about defeasing the bond that the general fund was going to run out of money and we'll have to borrow money and anticipation loans to cover our operations. So when was it? In July, I put together a cash flow projection that is a forward-looking projection rather than a backward-looking projection. So this looks uh, forward for the rest of the year to project how much cash we'll have in the general fund at the end of each month. The top line will show you the cash at the beginning of the month, which simply just rolls up any balance from the previous month. And then what I've done is I put in uh, the revenue sources, and you, we come down for a total revenue, and then expenditures and then if you'll see that item in green that 7.1 that's the transfer for the debt defeasance that was made in September to the debt service fund so that's been made already um, so as of s at the end of September my projection showed that we would be down to 3.7 million dollars in the general fund and you'll see that uh, it drops to 3.1 in October uh, that, and that's the lowest point of the year. Now, the question is, okay, so how good is the projection? So how is it holding up to actuals? So the, on the back of the sheet in the, in the back of the room, uh, what I've done is I've, the top line I've put together the projected cash balance, which came off the pre, uh, previous spreadsheet. And then I've put an actual cash balance for July, August, and September, which are the months after the projection was done. And then in red, you'll see the, the difference between the projection and the actual cash balance. So the projection in July was six was $652,000 less than the actual cash. So we had actually more cash than I had projected. Um, in August, uh, the projection was 518000 under the actual. And in September, my projection was off by 6.3 million. So we had 6.3 million more than I projected. So the question is, why such a big variance in that month? So there's a couple items that explain that large variance. Um, number one, in the projection, I had a million dollar budgeted for B Road Fund billings that should have come into the general fund. The billing didn't get completed. Um, I assume it will get completed this month. And, uh, and, and the cash will come into the general fund. Um, the other one was that through the ARPA funds, we uh, took those ARPA funds as lost, as, uh, lost revenue, um, and those funds came into the general fund, and I hadn't anticipated that. So that came in as a plus to the general fund, so making the general fund 
um, 10067000 So just for your information, I'm just updating you. Looks like the lowest will go is around $3 million, uh, in the general fund. Any questions? No. I appreciate those updates, Mark, and I appreciate the work and time and effort you stick on those, and it's sure helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Next item is a museum GOS grant. Sam was here. There he Sam. Is. Hello, commissioners. Um, I'm asking for authorization of electronic signatures for a $10,000 general operating support grant from the uh, Utah Division of Museums, part of uh, cultural and community engagement. This is a grant we've received multiple years. Um, they typically have done their grant applications on a two-year cycle, and this is the second, second year of that, and then they sent out a new contract for each of their fiscal years. Um, we don't anticipate spending any of this money until January. This year we used it for things like paying the elevator bill, some of the basic maintenance, and what that enabled us to do, speaking of offsetting revenues, um, we were able to use the money that we would have spent on that to do some of the things like helping produce the exhibits and some of the things that are harder to um, harder to cover when you're paying elevator bills and heating and all that good stuff. Anyway, ask for signatures, um, authorization of electronic signature on that. This was reviewed um, by the attorney's office. Okay. Entertain a motion. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion that we approve the museum GOS grant and appropriate signatures that's been presented. Is that guys covered? Yep. Okay. Have second. a motion. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank Sam. you, Sam. Appreciate everything. Boy, yes, Sam, with those grants and your diligent work on those grants and your staff uh, makes a tremendous difference. Well, we've, we've got an amazing crew and we've... Um, we're trying to, you know, instead of using uh, single line fishing poles, trying to, to use nets and stuff when we look for these grants and calling up different state offices and instead of waiting for the grant application, just asking them if they have money that they need to spend and uh, what projects they're looking for. There's some strategy there, um, but we, we really appreciate the uh, operating environment that we have. And uh, the museum in particular, is, uh, has been recognized as first rate um, in the state. And in fact, the Reynolds exhibit, the boat exhibit and things that they've been working on related to water over the last two years is being honored next week by the Utah Division of State History um, out of their conference in Provo. So we're going out for that and excited to be part of that and represent you in a county and some of the good things going on. And we appreciate all the support of the public and the commission. Thank you. Sam, you, Sam. Sam, before you leave, I, the um, Exoplanet um, exhibition mm -hmm. from the Smithsonian, are we have, no, was it Smithsonian? Um, it was the... Um, it, was, it was indirectly through NASA. NASA. Do we have any more of those planned? Because um, those are... Those are great. Those you are, know, we're, we're looking at them. They're usually two years out. And so the, the one that uh, Crystal applied for that one just before the pandemic stuff happened. And so these agencies are now getting back to their outreach. Um, we do have plans to apply for some more and we're working, we plan to work with the school district so that we can ensure we get field trips through and, and things like that. That was a, a missed opportunity this year a little bit, but super excited that I think 
the only fee that they charged us was some shipping insurance, but then they came around and, and gave us some grant money to cover the shipping insurance. So if my memory serves right. Okay. Anyway, the great exhibit and um, things that are beyond our resources but are available out there, just great. Certainly, certainly. Um, and then um, we're uh, also continuing to collect Kids Canal stories and the kidscanalstories.org site is up and encourage people to, um, to check that out or to contact us um, if you've got a cool story related to Kids Canal or any local history. We're really trying to dive into public history and thank you for letting me exceed my uh, agenda item here for a second. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Sam. Next item is Appendix A policy. Okay. You, I don't know if you want to put it up or not. We've had it up. I, you can, just so we can see it. But it's been before the commission, I think, it, twice. It came up once, had discussion, came up the second time, it was tabled. Um, part of that tabling process was um, the first time through, there was no there were still multiple discussions on which positions, what positions. There were some observations, I think, from um, the attorney's office as to the precedential nature of this. The discussion um, that commissioners have we've just kicked around certain issues if you recall, um, when I brought this forward originally, I had said I wanted to see all of them um, go forward. The Career Service Board voted for them all. They support all of them going forward. Uh, in my mind, there are some that are absolutely essential for that because they are, they're not really, um, they're very, task oriented one of the examples uh, two for sure one is the uh, the landfill in particular there are rules and regulations with the landfill that it, if if the landfill manager comes in and say no you cannot put uh, medical waste in there the commission should not be going oh we don't like that answer um, we want you gone so that we can have someone who will let us do that uh, the same thing applies with community development, where we talk about um, there are, we, we abide by the International Building Code. It is not up to the commission or up to the state to say, nah, we're not going to enforce that um, on this particular person for, for this reason. So what we did is we talked in more detail about the various positions what their responsibilities were and how much was really political in nature and how much was technical in nature. So that's where um, I think it kind of went off, uh, why it didn't go forward at the first meeting, uh, why it was tabled at the second. I think we are now, the various commissioners have had time to think it through and have made their determinations about which if any, they would like to go forward with. So, Mr. Chairman, I don't know how you want to proceed, if you want to have discussion or if you're just looking for a motion. Um, um, well, let's, I'll put it up for a motion. If there's a motion, great. If not, we'll have some discussion. And we can have some discussion after the motion in a second, if there is one. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the Appendix A, Revision 9, as presented. It's, um, and revision 10, sir. Revision 10. My paper's old. <laughs> okay. I have a motion. I second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Um, I'll bring it up to, for discussion. Mr. Chairman, one of the things that um, I... One of the things that drives me on this is we just had this discussion a little bit further this morning, and that is how many things we have um, devolved from commission decision down to department head. And once again, I'm going to go back to my favorite example, which is community development. 
Um, <laughs> we were talking this morning about how many things we could have on this agenda if everything had to be voted on. And so that we are, we are assigning those to the department head along with whatever, if, if there is some, if there is any sense of political direction, uh, we make sure the department head knows that. Um, if the department head still works for the commission, I don't feel any concern about giving direction to a department head as to about where to go if the law allows. And if that department head doesn't follow that direction, then they're subject to removal like any other employee. So I don't have any concerns with that, and I don't think any uh, super, there hasn't diminished the supervisor's authority to be able to handle personnel actions. So I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I am too. I agree with what Commissioner Stringer said, and I had questions at the first and, and did our uh, research, and I'm comfortable with it. Okay. Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Thanks, Tanya, for your work. All right, that. thank you. You're the next one, too. County Health Benefits 2023 calendar year. Yes. So just um, quick, let me go back to the beginning here. Healthcare at a glance, just quick changes that were made. Um, what our prior year costs were, what our new year costs were, are going to look like for a renewal. Um, we went out to bid because of what our costs looked like. Um, with running our plan, ran a little hot this year with some with some claims. Um, so our fantastic team with GBS uh, has done a lot of negotiating for us. Um, we started with a very high renewal um, with. Uh, Tim and his crew working very hard for us. We went from um, a double-digit renewal um, down to, with consideration of the 200,000 admin credit, um, down to a 9.01 uh, renewal rate. And they also offer the in additional incentives of the 20,000 tech credit and the 20,000 wellness credit. Um, to the county as well um, through Cigna. So those are just some um, general numbers to add there. Um, oops. And move forward here. Um, just some average costs looking at what this would look like for the employee to stay at, at where we are. Um, we know that we haven't considered what our plans are going to look like. Um, but that this is just if the plans were to stay as status quo, what the plans would look like per family increase because of the way that we conducted our plans last year, the actual percentage for the employee uh, was below the way the plans were structured. Um, where we were at 15, zero and uh, 10, they actually went to like 13 and nine. Um, so if we were to go back to plan structure, there would be that a uh, little bit of an increase. Um, that's a conversation I know we're still working on, but just so that the employees are aware that that's um, what it looks like. Oh, it keeps going back the wrong way. Um, so the dental increase as well. This is another thing that we asked Tim, Tim to go back. The original increase was around 4 or 5%. We said we're not real happy about that with Cigna, so he went back to bat again um, for us, and the dental increase then came back at 1.97% uh, with an annual increase of 4,280. When you say, I'm sorry to interrupt you, 4,280 uh -huh. per, for the county, for the per plan. person, for the year? For the, for the plan is my understanding, for the total plan for the dental. And then we have our health joy. We are in, still in our contract with health joy. Um, health joy costs the count costs uh, eight dollars and twenty cents per employee per month. The twenty thousand dollar tech credit that Cigna provides to us 
pays uh, for the majority of this is generally costs around $27,000 per year, depending on how much, uh, how many employees we have that are engaging with the Health Joy. Right now we have about a 68% utilization for the Health Joy. One of the uh, great things that we have with Health Joy is the telehealth program plus our EAP, things of that nature. Um, the telehealth is uh, an awesome part of our health joy because it doesn't cost the employee anything to utilize the telehealth. It also doesn't cost our plan anything. So any employee that engages or their family to use that telehealth and uh, get their prescriptions, get that um, health, um, they get that at no cost to them and the county gets that at no and no increase to the plan. So it, we're not seeing that on our plan at at all either so we want to just continue to try and educate the employees to use that as much as possible as opposed to going into the doctor for those basic needs when 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 possible so we are uh, asking for additional funding um, for this to just offset the cost I don't believe that it'll cost that much but just so that it's available to offset that a little bit additional um, to make sure that our uh, health joy is fully funded for next year we had originally been utilizing the um, EAP costs that had come from Blumquist Hill, which was $12,000, and that was coming out of the um, self-employed funding fund, um, but I don't believe that fund's available, so we need to make sure that those funds are available um, to complete the funding for HealthJoy into the, into the third to fourth quarter if necessary. Okay. And um, the reason why I'm pushing to have go ahead and have Cigna continue is because if you remember when we originally made this change, there was a, a large disruption to our employees because of the RX changes and all those types of things. Um, if we continue with Cigna, we can roll this over into our new empl our employee navigator. So anyone who wants to continue on with that plan, they can it will roll over for them. They won't have to uh, go through the open enrollment process and they can just continue on. Um, and their RXs will, you know, remain the same, the, all of those types of things. So the, the disruption and all will not be there if we were to change uh, going into a different provider where we don't, those uncertainties would be there with having to go through different pharmaceutical and knowing where their uh, prescriptions would tier and whatnot. We're also wanting to know if we can go ahead and get the contract uh, approved today we know that we our plan structure is still a little bit on the conversation but noting that the 9.01 percentage is there for Cigna and the 1 point I believe 27 was there for the dental get those approved so that we can move forward with the Cigna contract with signatures and then we can finalize the structure hopefully this week so uh, the employee navigator team can build our open enrollment and we can have it ready for launch for our November 3rd wellness fair And then I was going to talk just a little bit about our wellness fair, if, if you guys would indulge me. Um, our wellness fair is November 3rd. We have DEXA body that's coming back down. That was a big uh, thing for our employees last year. It offers a full body scan. We have Life Health that will be providing uh, all of the biometrics and on-site health coaching and screening. Uh, they're going to do online enrollment for uh, the blood work so they can all the employees can just make an appointment and go down and get their blood work done. It's not just to show up and, and try and be herded in like we've done in the past. I'll be able to schedule an appointment, go down and go through all of the vendors, which will be nice this year. And then we'll offer all of our prizes and vendors, our prizes for people uh, visiting all of our different vendor booths. And we've got good participation from our community of people that are going to come and make themselves available um, to our employees this year, including Tri-County Health that will be providing flu shots and things like that. And then lastly, just a reminder that it is um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and this Friday is Mammogram Day. So uh, just reminding everybody that it is Breast Cancer Awareness. So any, ev anyone and everyone, please remember to go get your mammograms. And um, just remember to wear pink on Fridays. And I wanted to also introduce my new assistant, Jen Garcia. 
if you want to go ahead and take, stand up, Jen. If you need anything, any help in the office, Jen will be there to help you. And she also has pink stickers that she'll be at the back door to uh, give you a pink sticker just to help remind you that it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Do you have any questions for me? Um, I don't have any questions for you. I do have one question maybe for Tim. Oh. Um, <laughs> so we can further our discussions on the insurance. I tried to get you. How did you? <laughs> I know this discussion's been had two or three times over, over the last few years. We have a uh, number of employees that have insurance with, they have the availability to have insurance with uh, their spouse. And a lot of times we have them just take both because maybe it's that zero cost one or whatever that is. We've been talking about it for years about doing an incentive um, of some sort to pay um, employees that don't take the health insurance as long as they can prove they have health insurance somewhere else. It's been said that it can only be two or $300. Um, is there a maximum that can be paid out that you know of, or is, it, is that just kind of a standard? Tim King with GBS Benefits. <clears throat> Commissioner, in answer to your question, when you do a cash in lieu of option for those that can prove that they have other credible insurance, there's a couple of things to consider, and that information has been passed along. One is it does impact your affordability calculation to meet ACA requirements. So you have to be really specific on the amount that you give because then it can alter that single employee only cost that you have to meet with one of the three safe harbor methods with ACA. Okay. So that's, that's one calculation. The, the other thing that comes into play sometimes when you do cash in lieu of is a lot of times the ones that will take that cash in lieu of I realize you're offsetting some premium costs, but what you also do is find probably the more healthy individual will take that cash in lieu of option, and then your risk pool is, is minimized in the sense that you lose a lot of the good risk, and when you negotiate renewals and as you look at claims history, you start to see an impact because of offering the cash in lieu of. And again, there are specific requirements that go along with that, that you need to make sure that uh, those individuals that waive for that cash in lieu of have the, the proper um, information on other coverage and that that's kept, uh, of course, on file so that you can prove that. So there's, there's pros and cons about the cash in lieu of. Mm -hmm. A lot of times what employers will do is, especially where the county offers a zero premium plan, that is, that's probably uh, one of those areas where if you're looking for those to uh, potentially come off the plan that uh, um, would normally stay on because of a zero cost is, is potentially adding a small cost to a plan and that sometimes will, will help offset your cash in lieu of option. Okay. Thank you. So what we're looking for today is a, a motion to approve Cigna. Yes. So their renewal rate of the 9.01 and then the renewal for the dental as well. Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion. Oh, Bart, I'm sorry. And then also I was asking for the additional um, for the EAP so that we can fully fund the health joy. Okay. I will still entertain a motion. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move um, to approve the <laughs> I forgot what I was approving. Cigna. Uh, Cigna <laughs> and the Health Joy. Health Joy uh, as presented by Tanya, and I don't know if there's an authorization of signature that goes with yes, that. Yes, there'll be contracts. Including authorization of signature on the contract. Okay. Do we need to add the additional cost for that? Or does that two separate motions? 
So the additional cost for Health Joy um, yeah. was twenty thousand. But do we need to add that in the motion? Do you need a motion to approve the additional? Yes, I believe so. Yes. Can we include that in your motion? The Mr. dollar amount. Or do you want them separately? No, I can. It, it can be included. You'll amend your motion to and include motion. twenty thousand. Okay. Yes. We have a motion. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any further comments? Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. All right. Everybody wear pink on Friday. Don't forget. <laughs> Thank you, Tonya. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. Okay. Next item is called holder information security policy. Tanya, are you doing this one? Um, I think, look, this is, I think, Wendy's, but, okay, there we <laughs> <Yeah>. go. <laughs> Thought I was finished, Tanya. <laughs> I would. I, let me just say right off. Also, typically that the we had an IT security update. I think of policy a couple of weeks ago, and our IT director uh, Rick May would have been here. He has had a an emergency in the family, and so he's not here today to help. But that's also the day we discovered that. Uh, we had a policy, or Wendy had a policy that um, sounded a lot like the ones we had, and said, "No, no, this is not intruding upon um, what Wendy had wanted to do." And so, this is the follow-up to that. That original policy has been approved and implemented, and this is the follow-up from um, from one that was brought up but wasn't finished at the last meeting. Does that sound right, Wendy? Kind of. Well, so that's why you guys are up. All right, let me grab it. I thought I put it on there, but it didn't. So let me just go to policy. Grab it. There we go. All right, so Paul, um, Wendy had sent this to me. This is a policy that she created, so I want to make sure that um, I just acknowledge that. I simply went in and um, formatted it to um, the policy formatting that we would have for our manual. So this is her work, just my, my formatting. Um, so I really feel like she should come up to the Mike and just acknowledge how she came up with it and and go through it um, because I, I I formatted this for her so okay <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've been working on this for quite some time actually just thinking about it for some time since we have started taking a lot of credit card debit card transactions oh, sure. within the different departments of the county I felt like we needed to have this policy in place so that the employees would understand um, the importance of keeping that information secure. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Any department that handles credit or debit card transactions, they have access to a lot of information, credit card numbers, um, security numbers on the back, PIN numbers, so forth. And so, um, we just wanted to create a policy that basically says that they will not, that the employee will not duplicate that information. They will not um, store that information, uh, credit card holder, card holders, um, any secure information that they might get from those cards. And that they won't store those, they won't use them for their own personal use that sort of thing um mm -hmm. so so that's the that's just the just, the just of the policy mm -hmm. um so that the employees understand that if they do do that then there would be some repercussions mm -hmm. from it if they divulge any of that information and this was sent to john and he had um read through it and and acknowledged that all of the the content 
um, was good. And again, I just took the content and then formatted it into a, the policy form, you know, into format. So. John, you're good with how it's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about uh, just comments or just thoughts? Uh, Brenda, do you, I know you have some of these cards on hand that carry over month to month. Does this look like we're kind of covering everything? I'm just asking, you know, it's, you, you see questions or problems or, or is there enough or we cover? You know, I think you have monthly charges no, on them or something. No, I have monthly charges, but they have to pay monthly. We they, do not they call hold it. any card. We don't carry them over and mm -mm. hold them, I guess is what I'm saying. They will what? call in and give us a credit card number to pay their every bill month every month, but we do not store any credit cards. So there's just no recurring payment on if they do, and a lot of if they don't like that we let them prepay okay. but we do not hold any credit cards we don't want that on our okay. shoulders okay okay sounds good yeah and i've read through everything as i was obviously formatting it and putting it into um this right. so i i think that it's a, a great policy and it, it meets the needs of of the county yeah i do too i think it's great i appreciate mm -hmm. your time Putting that together. Um, entertain a motion. Okay. Uh, do we just need a motion to approve with appropriate signatures for the car card holder? Do you have a po oh, it's, policy? It's a policy that policy it's going to go into our uh, the classification of 800, where all of the IT uh, okay. information is going to be stored in that. I'll make a motion to approve the policy number 820 for the card holder information security has been presented. That cover us? Yes. Yep. Okay. I have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Perfect. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Wendy. Okay, the next item is resolution number 10172022 R1 a resolution appointing escrow agent and municipal advisor. Municipal. Who has this one, John? So Mr. Chair, you had requested that I prepare a, a resolution as stated, um, dealing with the, the action of defeasance of the uh, GO bonds, the 2015 GO bonds. Uh, so the resolution, it's a, it's a one-page document, it's resolution number as stated, a resolution appointing an escrow agent and financial advisor, whereas the Board of County Commissioners of Uinta County, Utah, approved resolution 0801-2022-R2 to administratively move forward on the June 6, 2022 decision to defeat certain GO bonds, and whereas the resolution stated Zions Bank Cor Corporation, National Association as escrow agent, and Zions Public Finance, Inc., as municipal advisor, and whereas on September 15th, 2022, Japheth McGee, Vice President of Zions Public Finance, informed Uinta County via email that Zions has chosen not to fulfill its obligations as previously agreed, and whereas U.S. Bank is available and willing to act as escrow agent, and Lewis Young Robertson and Birmingham Inc. is prepared to act as municipal advisor. And whereas Uinta County has determined that these two firms are qualified to serve in this capacity. Now, therefore, it is hereby resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Uinta County, Utah, as follows. Section 1, U.S. Bank or other similar financial institution will serve as escrow agent. And Lewis Young, Robertson, and Birmingham, Inc., or other similar entity will serve as municipal advisor. Section 2, all other provisions of Resolution 08 or 0801. 2022 R2 remain in effect and unaltered, and the legislative action taken June 6, 2022 remains in effect. All administrative actions to effectuate these prior prior actions remain in force. Approved and adopted the 17th day of October with a signature of the chair and attestation by the clerk auditor. Okay. Um, any discussion? Any discussion? Nope. Entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve resolution number 1017-2022-R1 as um, described by John Sturmer. Second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. 
Next item is amendment to support and services agreement with Highland. That's going to be me today because Rick is not here. And what it amounts to is we're changing from, it, we're not changing the terms of what we're going to be receiving and as a service from the software. We're just going from a contract where we purchase the software to a subscription base. Um, there are advantages to both purchase and um, disadvantages to purchase. If we buy it, then we become responsible for maintaining it. If it's upgraded, then we have to buy or we may have to buy the upgrades and we still maintain it. If we do it as a subscription, then they retain the ability to, um, if something is changed, they make the change. It's a, a month by month or quarter by quarter basis. So it's not really a change in product, it's the change in how we are receiving that product. Okay. So do you have an amendment? I do not have it, um, but it was the, said, as I said, Rick was called away late last night, so I don't have it and he didn't send it to me, but that's what it's about. And so if we were to move with this discussion, I would just approve it or request approval to um, when he gets back and to provide it to us that uh, it just come for your signature at that point in time. Okay, so approved off what, of just your explanation? Yes, I don't have it. Um, I don't know if John John left. Again, it's not a change in what we're, what we are. What we approved. Yeah, what we bought. Okay. It's just instead of buying it, um, and the cost will be, well, that's what I don't know. That's going to be the problem. Maybe we need to table this because the cost is going to be instead of a lump sum payment that we had seen and approved, it's going to go to a month by month, which doesn't really require a, a bid anymore, but it does require um, an obligation to spend some money. And that amount of money is um, going to change. So yeah. I that's the discussion, but I'm not going to, I don't think we should take any yeah, I think we just Action table on this that. until we have a copy of the amendment. Okay. See what the price is. We'll Unless in. for some reason it was given to John or Tegan and, and I didn't know that. If it, if he has it, we'll bring it back up at the end okay. of the meeting. Okay, we'll move to non-compliant buildings. Matt. You want to just go through each one? Yeah, if we could. Um, Matt Kazir with Community Development. I guess we don't need this for this first part, but I'll plug it in for when we need it. Oh, okay. So our first item, uh, first six items on there, you can see number one through six are all, uh, we're requesting authorization to record certificate of non-compliance on these properties. Uh, the first one is located at 2245 West, 500 South, here in the Vernal area. It's uh, serial number 571 and 12. Uh, this particular one is a, a remodel on a house. Um, and so they, they started the remodel without a permit. Uh, they were red tagged and then they did get a permit. Um, but they have never gotten any inspections still and um, kind of in the middle of the process. Uh, our process is we generally send out a letter by regular mail or by email uh, letting them know, hey, your permits. Uh, it's been more than six months since you've had any inspections. And if, if we don't hear back from them on that, then we send out a, a certified letter, a notice and order. Um, and in the middle of that, they did send in a request for a 180 day extension, uh, which was granted before uh, the realization that they were in the middle of the notice and order process. So um, 
That was granted to uh, January 28th of 2023. And so at this time, we would request that um, the certificate of noncompliance be recorded after that uh, date. Okay. Any further discussion on this one? Mm. Seeing none, uh, entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion to request the authorization to record a, record a certificate of non-compliance building or structure on property located at 2245 West 500 South Vernal, serial number 57112 to January 28th, 2023. Okay, I have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. Okay, uh, the next one is located at 1582 South Vernal Avenue. Uh, again, here in the Vernal area. It's serial number uh, 510739. Um, this is one of those buildings that we often refer to as a man camp. Um, they're the portable buildings that are generally used in the um, oil and gas industry for different things uh, that are moved around from site to site. Um, this one was purchased and brought to the property. Um, it's not connected to anything on the property right now. It's just sitting there. Um, according to emails with the owner, uh, they do plan on um, changing the use of the building to a single family residence. And so they're in the process of doing that. Um, where it's not hooked to anything and it's not currently being used, um, we did give them 180 days to kind of get figured out what, they, uh, what they're doing with the building, whether it's gonna stay on the property or move somewhere else um, and, and get the proper permits for what, whatever they're doing. Um, so that, uh, 180 days or six months would expire on uh, March March the 6th of 2023. Um, so the recommendation would be that if they don't have it figured out and it's still on the property that time, that the certificate of noncompliance would be recorded at that time. Six months from? Uh, so it's from the original red tag date of September 9th, 2022. Okay. Okay, any further discussion on this one? Seeing none, I'll uh, entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to authorize the recordation of a um, non-compliance structure uh, on property, property number 510739, uh, six months from the date of it was discovered 9-6, September 6th? Uh, September 9th September of 2022. 9th, yeah. 2022, so that would be after March um, 9th, 2023. Actually, it would be 26, okay. Okay. I have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Next. Okay, our next one uh, is located at uh, 12, 12,749 North Deep Creek uh, Road in La Pointe, uh, serial number 12, 27, and 6. Uh, again, this is uh, what we refer to as a man camp. Uh, it was brought on the property and is in the process of being uh, changed to a single family uh, residence. Um, the property has been uh, red tagged and notices have been sent. Uh, the owner um, has been in contact with our office, but we really haven't seen anything as far as getting any kind of uh, resolution to the, the situation at this point. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a minute, just a minute. Um, and so that's kind of where we're at with it is that, um, and I'm not saying that he's not working on it, we're just not a, any closer on our end to getting resolution to it. So 
Um, I guess I, I can wait to make my recommendation after we hear, if you want to hear yeah, from him. Give him time. If you want to come up to the mic and state your name. G'day. My name is Paul Cactus Jack Lama. I'm the owner of the property. I go by Cactus if that matters at all. Um, so I do have, I'm, uh, I'm not sure how this works. So I'm, I'm learning behind the eight ball here, but I have uh, numerous items. I've spoken to Aaron today numerous items of some engineering drawings and, and uh, I've contracted, um, well, I'm working with Sarah Bell at the Tri-County to get the septic system sorted out. Uh, Randy Wynn will put it in and he'll do the perk test as well. And then I've spoken to Jeremy Raymond, the fire test. And so working with uh, getting all that to get sorted and I was hoping for the 180 days as well to okay. get everything finalized. Okay. Is the home currently being lived in or is it just under construction? Under kind construction, of? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now I'm waiting for your recommendation. Uh, is it connected to anything? Power? It's not. Water? No. Septic? Okay. No, yeah, so I wouldn't see an issue with giving him the 180 days in to, as long as he doesn't connect it to any of those things or anything until proper permits are issued. Okay. Okay. Good with that. I'm very good with that. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Just so we don't run into a problem down the road is the understanding well. you're working on these things okay but you is have the home currently being you still have to go through the process of getting the building okay. permit right the owner and getting those things approved uh, is it connected to anything you power anything not. up water and yeah, you have to get all that done if it's not haven't seen the building permit hasn't been approved then at the end of the six months this will be posted Right. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. And I think to stay consistent, maybe we should, I guess we could go six months from the red tag date, like the previous one. Uh, that does put him back a little bit because this one was red tagged on July uh, 7th of this year. So, um, July 7th, August 7th, September 7th. Well, actually, that's taken three months. Is you okay with that time? Can you get that done? Um, well, with months? the winter going and it's, it's a fairly remote area. So trying to get concrete and stuff to dry when it's colder, if I would, I would love a little bit of extra time if you could move it from perhaps. But the concrete wouldn't uh, necessarily, I mean, if he applies for and uh, gets his building permit, then that would be enough to keep him moving, moving forward. So if he gets his building permit, yeah. um, this goes away. Right, well, because it's not being lived wall. in or anything. I, I might prey upon your kindness as I'm going through a fairly litigious divorce as well that's taking up a great deal of time so it's it's really difficult to balance a number of things here so i'm just asking for as much time as possible please well if we get the building permit if you follow through and get the building permit now this a lot of this stuff will move away is what you're saying right so, so i just need a bit more time to get just, all the permits you just need to get the building permit yes now at this time and and uh, so this time frame that you suggested especially is gives him plenty of time just to get the building permit if that's it alone Right, Matt? Right. I mean, it depends on where he's at with it because, like he said, he does have to get engineering and uh, septic approval from the health department. I don't know about the water, if it's a well or not up there where you're located. But Can I, can I offer this? If, if we follow the standard time frame and then as you get closer to that time frame, if, you're, if we're seeing a lot of good communication and stuff, you could always bring it back to the commission to say, can we – Kind of commission yeah. approval to extend what our normal time frame is that way you're staying under your policies and procedures and not breaking any protocol but if we're seeing good communication and good action i think you can always come back to the commission and ask for a, uh, an extension to that so we're not trying to work out every unknown detail in in this meeting yeah protocol we're staying within the same thing consistently but, but also always trying to keep a door open for people who come across unforeseen calendar issues and stuff like that. Would, would that work? Yeah, that could work yeah. uh, on our end. Yeah. Um, Perfect. Thank you. Right. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. So then that would put it at January, six months from the red tag date, be January 7th of 2023. Okay. Okay. January 7th, 2023. Yes. Uh, entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion to uh, authorize and record a certificate of non-compliance building or structure on property 
Serial number 12276 to extend till 17 of 23. Is that what you need? Does that work? Okay. Yep. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Mr. Chair, can I just ask that in the minutes we get a note of that ongoing communication just so it doesn't get lost in the record? So yeah. it, it won't, obviously it's not an official thing we're requesting, but just the note that the two parties will talk and then Matt could bring a, a request forward if, if needed. Okay. 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 All right, the next, next one is located at 155 West, 2500 South here in the Vernal area, uh, serial number six, 23248. Um, Again, this one is a remodel on a home. Um, <clears throat> we did, we sent, they hadn't gotten a, gotten a final inspection or a certificate of occupancy on the, the remodel. Um, we sent them a letter. We didn't get a response, so we sent them a certified notice and order, uh, letting them know, hey, you've got to get this taken care of. Um, they, did, they did contact our office, and they did get an inspection uh, this past Friday um, they have uh, two items they have to finish the electrical and the receptacles um, in the bathrooms need to be GFCI protected um, so uh, seems like they're issues that can be resolved fairly quickly and so the recommendation on this one would be to give them 30 days to get those uh, corrected and um, if, the, if they don't do it then we could record at that point After how long from today? Uh, 30 days. 30 days from today. Yeah. We could, I guess we could just do a month. Uh, okay. So what are, what are you, the 18th, 17th today? So 17th. November 17th. Just correct me. These, this remind me, um, this one has a building permit, an active building permit. They have an inspection done today. Uh, on Friday on Friday yeah so at the time the letter well at the time the notice and order was sent the the building permit had been vo voided because oh, okay uh, but they did they paid the uh, reinstatement fee and the uh, $50 inspection fee that they needed so okay um, it is currently active at this point okay sounds good Entertain the motion. So is th they're completed with the project, is that right? Uh, close, yeah. They just have those few, those two items to get corrected. Some something with the electrical. Sounds like the electrical wasn't uh, completely done. The finish electrical, and then they had. Looks like they had some uh, outlets in the bathroom that were not GFCI protected. That they can either change out a breaker or change out the outlet itself. So. So they have a valid permit now. Why are we even thinking about issuing them? Do we do that to everybody? If you've got a valid building permit, do you have a certain amount of time you got to get finished? Uh, yeah, so you have uh, six months between approved inspections. So they still don't have an approved inspection in that six month oh, okay. period. All right, all right. So um, that gets it. A... Yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve authorization of a certificate of non-compliant structure on property at 155 West 2500 South, parcel 623248. Um, if it, the corrections are not made uh, on the inspection by November 17th, 2022. Number four? Number that was five. number four. 155 West, 2500 okay. South. Yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. Second it. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Commissioners, can I interrupt real quick? I need to excuse myself because I have a prior doctor's appointment I got to get to. Yes, um, I have talked with Tegan, so she will be here for the remainder of the meeting. So if there's any questions, she, she can cover those. 
come on up, Tegan. Yeah, she may have to say. <laughs> She's like, no. <laughs> yeah, is there any one of these I see what here? happens in that seat. Um, any item we need to address, move up on the agenda just for your sake? No, I, I right. think we're good. Um, Kazir, Matt, and I have talked about the subdivision issue. Um, I'm not concerned about anything in the Board of Equalization. And then in the closed session, um, I'm going to, I just need to remind myself, I'm going to text. We need to call outside counsel. There's a centrally assessed okay. case. I will text the contact information to Tegan uh, so you guys can have that we'll conversation. Need to be adjourned into the small conference room? Yeah. I, I, I had talked to her that the, our request would be to into the small conference room so we could have okay. the conference phone available. Is there a time for, set for that? Or? I texted her and I said it was going to be around 1230. Uh, that was 45 minutes ago. Um, so I'll text her again and Mountain say, time. just stay, stay tuned. We're going on California time now. Now we're doing Yeah. It. Uh, and maybe Hawaii time by the time we, whatever, whatever they are, the Pacific time in Hawaii. I don't even know what they no. are. I've never been there. So I apologize for stepping out and breaking your, your train there, You're fine. Matt, on your agenda items, but I will get out as quietly as possible. Too late for that. <laughs> I'll just leave my mic on and say a bunch of hot mic stuff as I'm on my way out. Tegan, are you wanting to come up or you want to just sit down there? <laughs> that would be great. You don't have to walk back and forth from the microphone to the chair. It's fine. I don't know. I get in the reception. Okay. Thank you all. Thanks, John. All right, number five under that one is uh, located at 625 East, 500 South in the Vernal area, uh, serial number 548 and 3. Uh, this one's a little unique. Um, so um, the property owner owns three different parcels right in the same area, and they all uh, touch one another, but they're three different parcels. Um, two of the parcels... Um, are divided by the Vernal City boundary line. So one of the parcels is in Vernal City and the other parcel is in unincorporated Uinta County. Um, they constructed a storage building on the property and they, they thought they knew where the property line was for the property and they thought they were staying their setbacks. Um, I believe there was, a, there was a fence there or something that um, they thought was the property line. Uh, Come to find out, it's not the property line, and so the building actually crosses uh, over into the adjacent property, which is located in Vernal City. And so now we've got a building that crosses not only a property boundary, but a jurisdictional boundary as well. And so in, in talking with them on what their options are, um, their option, they don't have the option just to adjust the property boundary um, because you can't have a property that's split between the jurisdiction of the city and the unincorporated county. So uh, really their only option is to adjust the city boundary and that's either through uh, de-annexing the property from Vernal City or annexing um, the other property or additional property into the city and then moving the property line at that same time along with that annexation. Um, and the owners, uh, in conversations with them through, through email, they, they are uh, trying, their, trying to work with Vernal City. They, they've said they have calls into Vernal City, but they haven't um, got a response back from, from Vernal City. Um, I, did, uh, I did suggest to them that if they're having an issue getting in contact with the city, that they contact Quinn the city manager and gave him his contact information. Uh, that was last week on uh, Wednesday or Thursday, I think, on that email. Um, and, and so with that, I mean, the, the process isn't going to be a, a quick, it's not just a, a couple of week deal. It, it's going to take some time for them to get through the uh, application process and the annexation process that that the city has, and uh, my understanding is that most of that's, uh, most of the requirements for that are handled under the state law. So, um, so anyway, with this, with this one, they th they had a building permit. They got all their inspections. 
Uh, the building's good. We're we're ready to issue the certificate of occupancy, but we can't because of the boundary line issue where it's across uh, there. So um, with that, I guess the recommendation on this one is that we give them the 180 days, that, the six month, which is generally the longest period of time that we give uh, so that they can try and get this worked out with uh, Vernal City and uh, come to some kind of resolution on it. Can we do the same stipulation as if they're in good conversation with you that, and they're getting really close that we can maybe give them extension yeah. at that time? Uh, sorry, can we clarify what good conversation is to the um, Community Development Office? I, w I would say it would be that they are actually have an application in with the city and it would be maybe the city that's holding them up, not the city itself, but the process mm -hmm. that they have to go through um, that would be holding them up. But they are, they're doing everything they can to comply, uh, but maybe the process takes longer than six months. That would be my interpretation of uh, uh, maybe a good faith effort might be a, a better term for it. But. Well, I just was asking. I don't know if that'll be in the motion or not, but yeah, just asking. Okay. Any other comments? <coughs> Discussion? Entertain a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion that we go ahead and request authorization to record a certificate of non-compliance building on or structure on property located at 625 East 500 South Vernal, serial number 5483. Uh, to give them a 180 day notice. Days to comply. 180 days, I guess what I'm trying to say. But to come into compliance. Come and work through this process. Okay. Have a motion. Second. Any further discussion? I No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 Haven't even asked for a vote yet. Uh. uh Seeing no further discussion, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. <laughs> okay, the last one of these uh, non-compliant buildings, it's located at 7786 North, 7500 East in La Point. It's serial number 131151. Uh, this one's a little bit of a unique situation. Uh, so the home on the property was constructed without a permit. Um, when it came to our attention that there was a structure on the property, we did go out, we red tagged uh, the home. Uh, the homeowner at the time, the property owner came in, uh, applied for and received a, a building permit. Um, and then in between the time that he got the permit and when we had time to go through and try and clean up permits and notice people that had had inspections and things. Um, the property owner had sold the property uh, to a new owner. Um, and my understanding is that he didn't disclose that there was an open permit and that there were things that had to be done to the, uh, the home to bring it into compliance. Um, so now the new owners are stuck with uh, this, the home that they purchased that's not in compliance. Um, and, and so uh, we did notice the owners. So it was about a year ago that we originally sent out a letter to the new owners saying, hey, there's an issue with the permit. We, we've noticed that ownership has changed since the, the building permit was applied for. Um, and we're just not, I mean, the the changes are significant that need to be done to it, uh, including a foundation. I mean, one of the biggest things is a foundation needs to put under needs to be put under this building, and so uh, it's not it's not an easy fix. Um, and so uh, I don't know. I, I I guess that's where we're at at this point with it. Um, the the building permit at this point isn't. Uh, active anymore. Um, the last owner never got any inspections. He just got the permit, uh, didn't get inspections, and then he sold it without, again, my understanding is without disclosing that 
that there was an issue. And so, um, yeah. So what are you expecting from the new owners? Uh, so then, I mean, it's, it falls on the responsibility of the new owners to bring it into compliance with current building codes. Okay. And if they want to make changes to what was proposed to in the original building permit, you know, maybe the foundation says maybe they want to make changes to how that's done, you know, they can do that. Um, but, I mean, it, it does, it puts them in a bad, a bad spot because they... Okay. They purchased it not really knowing that there was an so, issue. So we have to take this action under our rules because it's non-compliant. Right. But the effect on the homeowner is it's just going to be sitting there, but we're not taking any action, right. court just, actions or Just recording on the property okay. saying that it's non-compliant. Right. That's all this action is. Did you want any time to do that or is it just... Might as well do it now. Is there something? Yeah, I think we just get it done now so it doesn't get sold again, maybe without a notice being recorded on there. Okay. That might be the best option. And this may be a discussion for another time, but how 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 are we going to do this and so this doesn't happen again? I mean, I've, we've seen it on two or three different properties that, yeah. that people have these open permits. They sell the house, so when they do a title search, they don't find that there's issues. Yeah, and then it's not disclosed a, to them. That then it's not disclosed to the, the new the new buyer. Yeah, and least, yeah. some way. Yeah. And I do have some ideas on how we could do it. Brenda, um, Brenda, <laughs> could you please come up and give us some help on this? I know of three right now offhand that's happened in the last couple of years. How, how, what could we do to help these guys do their job? but yet put something on that would red flag, and so when new owners are buying it, that a title search would show that it's, it's not. Possibly create an ordinance through his office and record. I don't know, I don't think you'd want to record your actual permit, but some kind of a document stating there is an open permit building permit issued on that property a title report would pick that up but title companies don't call your office to check on that thing that's not something right. that is the normal thing for a title search title search will go back 40 years or back to patent and a lot of these um, title companies local have a base so they don't have to go back that far but they do title search through my office. They title search through the courts. They look for judgments or anything there, but they don't go any further okay. with a title because what they're looking for is something on that land. If it's not recorded in my office or a judgment in the courts against it, they're not gonna see it. <clears throat> so if they had something that was, hey, there's an open permit on this property and a, a, a notice title of interest in. there is an oh yeah you file a notice of interest stating that there is an open permit on the property then a title report would pick that up okay our other option would just would be to record the certificate of non-compliance if there's not in a situation where there may maybe is not a building permit i think if we can uh, ex expedite the recording of that certificate of non-compliance right now under our own rules um, that have been put in place. The process to get that recorded takes a month or more uh, to get that done. Then that shows up with what she's needing. And th so that would be separate. This would be in a case where there's not an open, where there's not a building permit that has been issued, uh, but we would just record the certificate of noncompliance much quicker. Mm. Um, and, and it could be maybe be one of those administrative actions and then the appeal could actually, if there's, there would be an, a, there could be an appeal process or something that could be brought before the commission, um, if somebody felt like they weren't being treated uh, fairly or correctly or something like that. But then the notice would be there. Um, 
in we, case of we went through during the housing boom we went through the process some may think it's still going on but people were waiving inspections and that's part of what a home inspection probably would have caught this structural deficiency I would hope so but okay I, yeah, yeah. So, you would you would think that something like that could have caught some some of the well, issues it's there. it's also since it's not in compliance with any code any building code even if you don't have the inspection is there not still a requirement for disclosure of well, that's my understanding is that the owner should have disclosed it and whether there's an inspection or not what you're doing is you're looking for things with an inspection they said oh I'm disclosing all of these issues inspection confirms denies uh, reveals more yeah. whatever but I didn't think you could get out of the um, you know if you fail to disclose a material defect or issue that you have some sort of recourse that's my understanding so I'm yeah. I'm a little concerned about trying to add a process that just layers on to well, something to else especially when it doesn't really so what the recordation of these things does not impair the property it just gives the except in the eyes of a lender and a lender can still give it whether it's it's noticed or not it's up to them yeah well, so we got we got to have a process or we got to have something that this situation doesn't happen you, you know in place and I, you know and I, I'm agreeing with what you're saying but we it, in this particular situation with my knowledge I, something is I don't know I'm agreeing well, you know but I mean we got to have it ought to be the young kids show up to buy something that's uh, that's you know unaware and maybe no parental help you know they end up with something like this you know I would hope that we could come up with something that would I'd red flag it and I mean to give them some protection you, you I don't know well this is requires working with the attorneys but I if you want to do that why don't we develop something that says if someone knowingly sells a, a piece of property uh, that is in outside of code then they can be prosecuted by the county I'll second that motion. I can no, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. But I, I just yeah. because this is just a, it's a flag, but people have got to look for it, and it really doesn't do much. And then what happens if we miss one? What happens if there's a permit way out there somewhere, and you know you're inspecting and you don't? I mean, you, how often do you inspect inactive permits? Yeah, it, de it depends on staff time. So, so it depends I, on how busy the office is. And yeah, I, 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 it may give people a false sense of security <clears throat> that it's been taken into account. So I'm not saying no. I agree that there should be some sort of protection since we're the one that issues the, the permit and since we're the one who issues the default. And because that can affect a buyer uh, or, or the, an owner, that there should be some sort of recourse, but I'm not really sure what that is yeah. at this point in time. Well, I, I, I would I, like to see us come immediately, come back with some re solution to this, and maybe it's good enough. But I mean, we, yeah. I, I would like to see some immediate actions and solutions or options or something to talk about immediately on stuff like this that comes back and. And, okay. Uh, address it. I can draft. I can draft up some stuff because, like I say, our process right now on how it gets recorded is just part of our ordinance. It's not per uh, state law or anything like that. The the process that we follow. So um, we can come back with some different options, and we can look at what Brenda has said as well, and see if that uh, might be a possibility. Um, I, a notice of interest well. on property is a red flag. And your title attorneys will look at that as such. That's something and just to. They won't issue the escrow when there's red flags, and we have some title. Um, Old Republic is very strict. They're very strict on what they loan on or what they will insure. And so you have different title companies. You have First American, who's underwriters, 
and you have Old Republic, Stuart Title, and depending on which one, but they all are very cautious when it comes to a notice of interest. Hmm. Yeah. And so the notice, I mean, once the notice has been recorded, they've been working and we've been getting people in to get them corrected, you know, when they refinance a house or when they go to sell it. Um, it does, it pops up on the title and and owners or banks are saying, hey, we're not we're not interested until this is corrected. Right. And so we've seen people coming in, but I think the gap is where the notice can sometimes take so long to get recorded. I think if we can shorten that time down, uh, that that could help. And they uh, record a notice of interest that there is a building permit. Yeah, an no, active that could be another option. Permit. And then when those are taken care of, you can release it just like you do your non-compliance. Okay. Well, well there's something we ought to talk about. I didn't yeah. mean to yeah. get into the weeds on this. Please. 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 <laughs> These are good ideas, but I, I know when you um, purchase a home and you have a real estate purchase agreement, if you, have one. you have to, as the seller, you have to disclose all these things and you initial and sign, and isn't that a legal document also Should be. that they could pursue? Yes. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Should be. Well, it's just something we need to work on. Okay. And yeah, I, I, I can get some proposals down and we can start looking at it. And okay. And keep Brenda on the loop as well as what's going on. Well, yeah. Anything we could do just to help let's catch, let's maybe catch list. some of this stuff. Yeah. So on this one, what's our, what's our options on here? There's no option at no this option. point but to file the, the notice. Because we're aware of it. I'm not sure how we can say, okay. well, hopefully they can sell it before somebody notices. I think we've got to post it now. Otherwise, we're derelict. Um, as far as what that really means, I would just hope that if they come in, if these are people who are new to this process, that we help them as best we can get through it, how to get a permit, what to do. Um, yeah, I know can't the, do it for them, but we can help them a lot, get it fixed. One of the owners did come in um, on Thursday, I believe, and talked with uh, Aaron up in our office and okay. uh, trying to figure out what, what needs to get done there. So okay. um, hopefully they can get moved forward. But like I say, it's not just an easy fix on, on this one. Okay. Entertain the motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the... Um, Recordation of a notice of non-compliance structure on the building at 7786 North, 7500 East La Pointe, um, parcel 131151, um, simply because we must. With a no, no time, it needs to be recorded immediately. Okay, I have a motion. I'll second it. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. If, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask Brenda a question real quick. When you record something, does it ever become unrecorded or is it just that has a, so this is on there for life. And you can see its history. Okay. That's what I thought. Does it show satisfied? When well, it, it, a new recording. Yes, the, the most that. recent recording can supersede, something can supersede this. He would have to release it. Yeah. yeah. So what we typically do on these uh, non-compliant buildings, we record a certificate of compliance once they've complied. Yes. But clears it, it and that overrides the, yeah. and we reference the recorder's number and things like that so that they know where that it goes with that document. Okay. All right. Next item is an escrow agreement for Sharon Angus requ requesting approval of an escrow agreement for phase two of Silver Leaf Cove subdivision. Yeah. So um, if you recall uh, three weeks ago, I guess the last at your last meeting, the end of uh, September, um, the final plat for phase two of Silverleaf Cove uh, subdivision was approved. Um, uh, since then, the owner has decided that um, 
they want to bond for the uh, warranty of the improvements and uh, the sidewalks um, using an escrow account that would be held by advanced title uh, here in Vernal. And so um, advanced title sent over an agreement from that they had and uh, we sent that over to Tegan and Tegan reviewed it and I had some changes that she requested that they make on it. Um, they made those changes. Well, they just, they took the agreement that she sent um, and both the owner and the escrow agent have signed it. Um, the escrow amount is $38,200. Um, and uh, let's see, there is a place on here for um, for dates uh, on when when the county could go after that money if needs be uh, for warranty work or whatever. And uh, typically under our current ordinance, it's two winter seasons after the improvements have been accepted. And so uh, they haven't been accepted yet, but I think if we can just add that, there's a place to, to add that and we can just add that language in there, um, the two winter seasons. And then at that point, uh, we can either work with the owner to get it corrected or we can go to the escrow agent and request the release of the funds uh, to be used for uh, the deficiency. Okay. And then on the sidewalks, uh, they're wanting to do the sidewalks as the homes are built so they don't have to pay twice for a sidewalk that might be uh, damaged during the construction process. Um, so what we'll do there is we'll just make sure that with uh, before a certificate of occupancy is issued on those homes that the sidewalk is put in and completed and is in, is in good, uh, that, that it's in proper form, so. Okay. You have any questions? Nope. You've looked at, had the chance to look at that. That's correct, I reviewed it and approved it. Um, Matt and I were in communication and the changes that I had requested were made. Okay. So I'm good with it. Perfect. Yeah. And there's a signature for the chairman. Okay. Sounds good. Um, entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I will attempt to make this motion. Uh, I'd like to make the motion that we agree for the agreement with the escrow for Sharon Angus for the Phase two of the Silver Leaf Cove subdivision for the amount of $38,200 and to, after it has been accepted, they have two winter seasons to get the work completed with appropriate signatures by the said chairman, I guess. Okay. Have a motion. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Is the next one yours also, Matt? Subdivision yes, amendment is. for Roger Smith. Yeah, so uh, he's requesting amendment to lot number 30 in the Westland Park subdivision, uh, located at 2267 West, 900 North, uh, serial number 4, 87, and 30. And he's requesting to reduce the drainage and utility easement on the south side of the property from 50 feet to 15 feet. Um, so this is what the uh, screens are for. Uh, so you can kind of see where we're, what we're looking at and where it's at. So uh, just to kind of get the map here. Um, so this is 500 north, this is the high school 2,500 west and 1,000 north, Mazer Elementary, um, west of, or east of there, I guess, um, this property that's highlighted here in the aqua color. Uh, it's a property they were talking about. Um, let's see, maybe. Get down to the next thing here, okay. So, um, this is the subdivision plat that has been recorded for this subdivision. It's actually an amended plat. 
Um, and from what I can tell, the only thing that changed was this easement back here. It changed it from a 15-foot easement to a 50-foot. It was a 15-foot utility easement, and on the amended plat, it's a 50-foot drainage and utility easement. Um, I, I did as much research as I could on this, uh, went down and looked at old minutes, uh, tried to get a sense of why that was changed. Um, from the things that I saw and read, um, it looks like it was changed due to uh, moving water, uh, irrigation water from uh, through the subdivision to another property. Um, it, it doesn't appear that that's ever been done. There's no ditch there. There's no there's no water running through the area, um, and so uh, Mr. Smith. Uh, purchased the property and uh, was unaware that there was a 50-foot uh, easement on the south side of his property. Um, and, and this is my just my understanding, and I think he, he's here today so he can explain anything that's different. But um, he'd come into our office and was asking about building permits and what he, you know, where, what he can build and how to, what the process was. And uh, in some of those conversations, he brought the plat in that showed that there was this 50-foot uh, easement there and was asking, hey, can I be able to build in that? It's not being used or uh, it's only being used by strata networks. Or, um, and, and we let him know we, that we wouldn't be able to issue a building permit uh, if the building fell inside of that easement if, um, since we knew about it. Um, and he brought up that there are other other sheds and structures that ha that are built within that easement um, that exist there, and it's not really a county easement; uh, it's an easement for utility companies and such. And and so it's really up to them to protect their easements. The, the county, if it, if we're if we know about it, we're not going to issue a permit on it. And from what I can tell, the, the buildings that are in the easement uh, weren't ever permitted um, to the best of our records. So um, so anyways, uh, he went and talked to the utility, Mr. Smith went and talked to the utility companies and, and did find out that Strata Networks does have a line that runs in there. Um, and that's why he's requesting to keep the 15 feet, uh, their lines within that 15 feet. Um, and he talked to the other utility companies as well. Um, and then I talked with John Sturmer about this and said, okay, what's the process going to be? Do we, get, do we have Mr. Smith get letters from the utility companies? Um, and John uh, told me, no, let's notice the companies ourselves so that there's a good record at the county uh, that shows that we noticed uh, the different companies. So uh, we noticed the, uh, all the utilities, so Rocky Mountain Power, uh, strata networks, the water and sewer district. And then we also, um, since from what I could see it was, the easement was to carry water. We also noticed Ashley water users and the canal companies that are in that area to see if it's something they're possibly using. Maybe there's a buried pipe or, or something. Um, and then uh, somebody also says, you know, it might be one of the drains that the federal government put in as well. So um, we went and talked to the people over here on First North and 500 West, and they said that would be under Bureau of Reclamation if it is. So we noticed the Bureau of Reclamation, and uh, I did talk to Gabby, and she did get something back from them saying they don't have anything in, in the area for that. So um, other than that, we haven't heard from any of the other utility companies. And so um, I think at this time, um, if, if the utility companies aren't, don't have stuff there and it hasn't been used for uh, all these years, um, then I don't see an issue with changing that from going from the 50-foot down to the 15-foot easement and protecting the easement that Strata Networks is currently using. Um, this Keeping the 15 feet would also allow for any of the other utilities, uh, or it would still be a drainage easement. So if they need something to put a pipe in, 
obviously 15 feet I don't think is large enough for open ground uh, type thing, but uh, a pipe or something like that to transport water if needed, I guess would still be an option. Um, so with that, um, I guess this is what it would look like. Uh, it would, and this would only change on his property. Um, he's just trying to get it done just for, so that he can move on with his project and uh, not be held up by, you know, maybe other people in the subdivision that uh, maybe maybe want it there or something. So, what about the home? Or what about the property owners to the south? Is that correct? Pull that up there, back there with the high school and the ball yeah. diamonds and. Okay, where does it? Where does the ball diamond set in compliance to all this, or in oh. comparison to all? So this is the high school here. This is the football field, and this this is the softball field and the baseball field yeah. here. So it's quite a way. What about the landowner there, directly behind him? Right here. You know, she sit up there in the softball. Field. Uh, I think that's the school district. School district that owns that piece. You know, they put that drainage, that 50-foot thing in there, either for flood control or high, you know, big snow years. That's, you know, they didn't put it there just for good measures, I wouldn't think, originally. You know, my, yeah. you know, my opinion is, is why would they do it just if there wasn't a reason? And reason and that my thoughts are is it's probably something to do with the, the water runoff. You, you know what I'm saying? Maybe in a, you know... If we ever have them good snow years again or something, you know, is it, uh, have we considered that or have we looked at that, Matt? Have we looked at, Yeah, know, so there are some inlet boxes there, uh, not in this area, but um, in that subdivision, there are, there is a stormwater system. I don't know exactly how it works or what it goes to, but. but yeah, what's the property shows the 15 foot easement. 50 foot. Well, it wasn't it? Uh, so, what's the 15? Where did that come from? So, uh, okay. So, the original plat that was filed for this subdivision showed a 15 foot easement. So, and, that and was they, at the time of construction. Yes, so that was at the time of approval of the subdivision. Uh, down the road, several years uh it came back and they amended that from 15 feet to 50 feet who's they um it would have been the owners at the time the owners of the subdivision at the time um from from what i saw in the minutes and things um there was a lot of as the subdivision started there was a lot of there was a default of the developer Origi the original developer and so the the roads and things never got completed some of the curb maybe some of the curb or something got put in or or some things were done but it never got completed about putting another one in there. and so when a, a new developer came in and purchased it um, they came to the county and said hey we're looking for some help here to finish the roads and things and that that's the time that the change was made as well to uh, this easement so they but it's really why? unclear yeah there's nothing in there that's really clear on why that was changed so I guess to Commissioner Horrocks's point at the time of it was developed and approved it was thought that 15 foot was acceptable efficient yeah and so the change since we don't know what it was for uh, in the meantime, people have encroached upon that 50 foot either before it was done or after it was done because most of them didn't get permits. Is that? Yeah, from what we could see, the, the ones that are there along his stretch, uh, we did, there's no permits that have been issued for those okay. that we can find. Um, not saying that our record's 100% complete on every building permit that was issued by I think we have the majority of them. So after having talked to all the utility companies, they're not interested. So the only people that might be interested would be either the developer who wanted to put secondary water or the county who wants to do flood control. 
Yeah. Who else would want that right of way? Yeah, or an ir irrigation company or something like that. For Well, they don't own anything now, though, right? Irrigation company. There. Um, no, but I'm, I'm just saying one of the uh, okay. owners of the irrigation company, I guess. Hello again. <laughs> there are ASCS drains that run up through there. Not in that spot. And they also have the two ditches that run one on the north side of the high school and one directly on the south side. And then across the highway, you find the ASCS drains running through. In fact, they had issues when they built the university up there because it went across one of them. But I don't have any record of ASCS drains. I'm the one that sent Matt up to Natural Resources on 5th West to check with them to see if they had something there. Okay. And I know that field was like a drainage field, but they do yeah. have those drainages and they're open drainages that run through there. Yeah, you can see them. Mm -hmm. And usually if you see an easement on subdivisions, it's a 10 foot easement for utilities, not a 15, not a 50. So that's why I sent Matt up to check on because it does say drainage, but if they don't show anything on their drainages, running through there. That would have been my guess as to what ran through that property. Okay. Um. Well, um, I know the owners here, do you have any comment that you would like to say? Has it been covered? If you'd come up to the mic. So uh, I'm Roger Smith. I'm the owner of the property at 2267 West 900 North. And back in March, as uh, Matt said, I started doing an inquiry on what it takes for me to get a building permit to build an outbuilding. Uh, when I say an outbuilding, um, basically it's for storage of my boats, tools, and to work on what I call a project boat. Um, one of the stipulations that I gave my real estate agent when I bought the property, and I specifically asked her to do a title search on easements, is that in this area that I want to build my building, are there any easements? And I was told no. Uh, when I went to sign the paperwork and we got to the page that's supposed to have a plat or a drawing or whatever description, it references an amended plan. I asked the title person that I was doing the signing with if that had any impact, because to me it was a total deal breaker, um, on me getting a permit to build a building here. I was told no. Um, as far as the timing of the amendment, the original proposal for this subdivision, um, it was a matter of months that it was amended from 15 to 50. There were a lot of perk tests done in the area. There was a high water table. They figured that that was mostly due to the irrigation that was going on in the property before the, the Department of Education owned it. Um, and also the lots were all being permitted for septic. Uh, there was no sewer. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of building history that I know a little bit about in my 30 years of building custom homes in Summit and Wasatch County. We did a lot of work with septic systems. Um, I went to the records department and we spent hours literally trying to find out who requested the amendment and why, because originally it was a 15 foot utility, got changed to a 50 foot drainage and utility um, and we couldn't find any records of who or why. Um, that company went bankrupt before they started the, the subdivision. However, the plat stayed the same until it was changed to actually grow the subdivision um, and that's not shown on the current plat map. Um, the drainage in the education department property all flows to 
a central a canal that runs through the center that flows into the central canal. The drainage in our subdivision is all controlled by curb and gutter and some storm drain system that flows into a pipe that flows into the central canal. Um, from the fence line or the property line, and, and I'm gonna assume one is the same, uh, the drainage goes in opposite directions. Uh, my lot drains towards the street, their lot drains towards the canal. Uh, um, but I don't know if that has any bearing in this, except that I, I went to the Bureau of Reclam Reclamation, Ashley Water Users, uh, the Uinta Water Conservancy District, all the utilities. Only one utility told me that they were using the the property. I've had the property blue staked. Their lines, their community lines, um, don't run anywhere near I want to build a building, nor are they outside of a 15 foot section. Um, the only other thing that I would like to ask the commission to consider is that in this plat amendment process, there is a requirement in the paperwork that requires me to have a survey, a physical survey and a mylar overlay based on that survey of the change in the plat. And my question or my request is that that be waived in that this is a referred line that I want changed. It's not an actual surveyed line. It's based on a surveyed line that I don't want to change we're just changing the description from 50 foot to 15. Um, I don't know if you have any more questions for me or? No, nope, I just I just wanted to give you a chance to speak and I appreciate so we can hear that. that so. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, on whether a survey is required or not, I did talk with Brock Sloth. I don't know if he's here or not, but um, I think that decision is best left up to him as a surveyor, whether, if, whether you know, whether it's required or not per, per state requirements, or maybe the recorder has some requirements on what it is, but it will require an amended plat at minimum. Yes, it will require amended plat for the subdivision state code. For the subdivision or his lot? His lot. His lot. He, yeah. He's amending his lot. He doesn't have to do the whole subdivision, it's only his lot. lot, but it will have to be. But whether that requires an actual physical survey or not I think was up to I think you said that was up to Brock on whether that was actually required or not um, I did talk to Brock and it seems like he told me that he would probably be okay without it but um, he would have to see the plat so okay. but either way a plat's gonna have to be drawn up that meets the specifications for the recorder and it's gonna have to meet all the most of these requirements are state requirements they're not they're not something that the county controls. And Brock and Brenda are the best ones to answer those questions. Um, so he hasn't, um, we told him, hey, hold off on getting the plat or anything done. Let's just take it and see where it goes. That way, if, if it doesn't get approved, you know, you're not out any money or anything or if something comes up. Um, so that would be the other step to this is uh, if it does get approved, uh, that he would work with, uh, a survey or engineering company, I guess, so that they're the ones that generally do it and get the proper plat uh, drawn up and get that recorded. Um, and again, whether that requires a survey or not, I think would uh, would be dictated by state law. And I think Brock's the best one to answer that question. Okay. Well, with that discussion, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve um, the subdivision amendment for lot number 30, 2267 West 900 North, parcel 48730 uh, to amend, or amend, I guess it is an amendment, um, to the right of way line um, 15 feet from 50. And as far as what is required to amend the plat, that would be up to um, the surveyor and the recorder. But I do move to modify the plat to move that, or amend the subdivision to move that line back to 15 feet. Okay. 
I have a motion. Second it. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. Thanks, Matt, All for right, your work you. on this. Okay. We have a need to recess for the Board of Equalization. I'll do this one if you want me to. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move to recess in the Board of Equalization uh, and upon completion of the uh, work inside of the Board of Equalization, adjourn and reconvene back in the commission meeting. Okay. I have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passed. So we're in the Board of Equalization. Um, first item in this is approval of uh, stipulations of a hearing officer. Now, as to be clear, you're acting as the president of the Board of Equalization. Hopefully that's clear. Okay. <laughs> I'll try to make this a lot faster than that. How's that? Yeah, would you? Okay, commissioners, oh. overall we had 29 appeals. Is this for the hearing officer first? It's all the same thing. Oh, well, it? it's, I can do that when it's, it's... You do both of them the same I'm going to do them all at the same time if Great. I can. Well, I'll tell you what, we're losing, we're losing the participation. People. Losing. Even Jeremy's <laughs> leaving us. Even, well, him and Tim have been I turned the conditioner off. <laughs> <laughs> I, Don't put that in. It's not up here. It's 73 degrees up here. Oh. Yeah. I'm sweating. <laughs> Go ahead. Anyway, 29 total appeals. There were several that withdrew. Afterwards, all said and done. Original value was, was $9,640,222. Stipulated values now is $8,841,587. This is, again, market value only. So that is the total of the stipulations. And with that, commissioners, we had a, it's, it was a kind of a funky deal, but we'll make it short and sweet here. There was an appeal on a board on a green belt application. Mm -hmm. Happened to file all the same time as the stipulate, as all the board of equalization was going on. The hearing officer did hear that appeal and has upheld the county assessor's uh, decision to throw him off of Greenbelt. He can now appeal to the state. And this that is a separate one, because it is actually for 2023, okay. but he has only 30 or 60 days to appeal from the time that she notifies him. So that is that one. And so approval of the stipulation and approval of the Board of Equalization on the Green Belt application, Green Belt appeal. That's my motion. <laughs> okay. I have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Next one, commissioners, we met with Commissioner Haslam on uh, the indigent abatements. We had a total of two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen apply, and two of them been recommendation be denied and she met with you on one of them one of them on yeah, friday on friday so there's 12 total abatement on these these are indigent people that applied that we give them a 50 percent of their tax so ta total total tax abatement of six thousand two hundred and forty two dollars and fifty seven cents so did we change one that we talked about then or did it stay the same Were you going to make it less than 50%? Is that what you were talking no. about? No. Do you remember when which? came in and talked? Oh. You came and talked to Commissioner Come Shreen. in and talked. They approved it. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So what that changed the total or what? No, that was included in that. That was included in that total? It should be the same that thing. we went across? Yeah. Okay. Your right. total was a little different than what his. There was one more that was added. And that what was the total Friday. come to? Total came to six thousand two hundred and forty-two dollars and fifty-seven cents. So it went down, because we was at seventy-three thirty-three oh. seventy. You want to look at this? Is the one that we went across? Well, you dropped two. That was fourteen. Of them. Two. two of those came off, and then another one was added. But it's a very small one. This would have been with the others added on. Okay. All right. So the total we're approving is six thousand what? Two hundred forty-two dollars and fifty-seven cents. Two forty-two fifty-seven. Okay. That's 
So we need to have a motion on this, don't we? Mm -hmm. Okay. You're asking for one? I'm asking for a motion, please. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the uh, 12 applications for indigent abatement in the amount of $6,242.57 as presented. Okay. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Yeah, I think Thanks, this Mike. is a good deal that the county has this to, you know, I think the process is good. I think it's a good deal that we have this here, and it's and just I don't think some it's of those abused. will be the meet the sixty-six year old next year, and then they're just the state kicks in and pays it. Okay. Where would you like me to sign this one? Right here. Okay. And then just on the back page. Yes, it's back here. It's dated. Yeah. Yes. What are we? Ten seventeen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Brad will sign this one, and then I'll give him everything back to you. Please sign that. Okay, now we are you, back you, you into... You want to ask me about Highland. I found out information. Oh, did you? I did. Well, I'm back. <laughs> I got to get back into yeah, regular session here. So okay, you now... That motion. Oh, okay. I'll ask you about the Highland deal. So you're adjourned, we adjourned, and we're back in regular session? Yes. Okay. Um, on Highland, I got an email from um, Karina, and basically what it amounts to is that the Highland changed they, their business model. They left the selling and went to the um, lease. The amount of money didn't change. The amount over three years is $20,301.18. So with that, I would make the motion that we, that the commission uh, approve the amendment to the support and services agreement with Highland. Seconded. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Okay, where does that bring us now? Public comment. If we could hold those to 10 minutes, three minutes apiece, I'd appreciate it. Very limited. It does, not, it does not serve your purpose of letting the public speak if you just limit it like that. But I do have some comments. You, um, this is about the defeasance. You appointed U.S. Bank and Lewis Young and Robertson as your municipal advisor. We need to talk about the fees, Mr. Chairman. What is involved here? Um, Zions Bank actually is not taking this escrow on because of the contention that was caused. The public or people in the public who don't want this defeasance to happen, they backed out because of that. that at least that's what I was told, is they don't want to stir up anything in the community. So now we've gone to a different bank who's not a community bank, so they don't care, they just want their money. But there are administrative fees involved. There's money involved, almost $100,000 to put an escrow and to, to defease this bond. And you're still moving ahead with this. You didn't comment, Sonia, the last meeting had some questions that were not, um, you didn't comment on them because she had two things and um, she spoke to the, the uh, info about the, the sheriff not really having anybody to say they're going to be able to get money from the federal prisoners. So that was like kind of a ploy to start the defeasement. Hey, we maybe get money, but that's not a real thing. And you didn't address that. And the cost of the escrow, the interest rates, um, not keeping the money in the county so that we can use the money. You know the issues. You know what I'm saying here. We keep that money here then we can use it, and if we give it to the escrow to the bank, they use it, and they get the money, the interest on that. So I just want to make it clear that there are those of us who are really against the defeasing of this. And by you choosing another bank to accept the escrow, we're still going to try and stop you from doing this. We have asked for an opportunity to put this on a referendum. We were denied that in our application by the three of you which it's, well, that Sorry. was your letter, and I'm not addressing you at all, Mr. Stringer. 
joke over here. But um, I want you to tell me at least, I have two questions then for you to answer. What are the costs going to be for U.S. Bank to take this on? Your administration fees, what is the cost to the county to defease this bond before it's callable? I don't have those numbers and, with me. You can get um, with Commissioner, mm -hmm. sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Mr. Sturmer asked me um, that if any comments were made about defeasance of the bond questions, um, he asked me to advise the commission um, that there is pending litigation on this, and so don't respond to questions. I actually knew was, he would say that if he was, that was here. His advice, but you need to answer the questions for the public because you just passed this, and there's going to be public money involved in this. But you don't know the answer to that. You've engaged another bank, and you don't even know the answer oh, to I the money. The, I, I'll, I'll say that I do have the numbers, but I don't have them with me. And okay. I've, I've always said that you're welcome to come in and talk, and get the numbers. Um, well, I didn't know you were going to do this, so here I am today asking. So I'm asking you that. Come and talk. Okay. Well, I I will find. I do want to know that. And time is up. My time is up. Oh my goodness. Okay. Do you want the three minutes? No, thank you. Go ahead. Tammy Meekum, I want the public to know that this bond has an appeal out on it, and yet you three are still trying to do as you please. So Zion's Bank has declined to do this escrow because financially it's not wise for the county and it's $26 million of taxpayer money and you three are still trying to do as you please. So what I want to know is did you invite your financial advisors, Wendy Long, did you invite Mike Wilkins to these meetings or did you three just show up to these meetings to do again as you please without recommending or advising any help from your county advisors that have been here for 20 and 30 years? Commissioner Horrocks, I'm going to ask you these questions. You're going to be here for the next two years. These two are not. Did you invite you're Your sure county? welcome to come in. This is a comment period. It's not a question and answer period. If you read on the bottom. Of course, because agenda, you, again, do not want the public to know what is going on with this defeasance bond. There's a referendum out about it. You guys denied it. We did an appeal. And now you're seeking another financial institution to do this $26 million bond of taxpayers' money. Like, not one of you will look up at me. I'm just writing notes. Now I'm Don't even say my time's up. You guys do not want the public to know about this. But Commissioner Horrocks, why would you seek another financial institution when your own local bank advised you guys not to do this? You're sure welcome to come in and visit with us if you want, but this is comment period. Thank you. Of course you're going to say that because you don't want it out in the public. Steve Hubert, concerned citizen. I just want to make a comment about what I've seen all three of you do since the first I met with you two in 2021. Just you two was in there and John and Matt in that meeting, but I got a, I got a recording of it. And I told you you was breaking the law then down there at the Golden Aid Center when you put that mandate on there. And you went ahead and kept doing it for five months till I finally give it to the sheriff and he sent you the statute. Then you went down and called an illegal meeting 
with Tri-County Health, and all three of you back Tri-County Health on that. So you didn't care about the law. And then you turn around and you're breaking the law again when you uh, illegally took the accounting services out of the auditing department, and that's what it says in, in, in Senate Bill 162. You're a, form, you're a commission form of government. That's where it says you shall leave them in there. You're not the other two types of government. You did break the law. You're still in, in uh, breaking the law. And I, I, I suspect things are coming down that, that you can't stop. Any other public comment? Seeing none. Um, we have the need for closed session today. Somebody wants to make the motion. Um, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I make the motion that we uh, recess into closed session for pending or reasonable immediate Immediate, immediate litigation and we adjourn to the small conference room to hold this with a 10 minute break in between and then we get through with that meeting go ahead and recess back into open and adjourn so you guys covered okay have a second have a motion and a second all in favor aye aye motion passed